Okay, so here's an example of a problem um, where you're given a function f of x and you're asked to find the derivative of the inverse. So f to the negative 1 means f inverse, and you can see prime. So you're trying to find f inverse prime of 3. So you're trying to find the derivative of the inverse of f at 3. So you're not trying to find the derivative of f. You're trying to find the derivative of the inverse function of f. Now, we don't even know what that function is, okay? But using the formula we just uh, you know, came up with, we can find this derivative. Now, first thing, I always think it's kind of ugly using f inverse, okay? Just with the parentheses around it and everything, I don't know. I just personally think it's a little bit ugly. So instead of using f inverse, I just say that f inverse will just rename it. Let's just call it g. So g is the inverse function of, um, of f, okay? So then the problem then just becomes finding g prime of 3. It's the same thing, I'm just renaming it. Instead of saying f inverse, I'm just calling f inverse g. Okay? Now, in the, uh, the thing we just talked about, um, we found that uh, g prime, okay, which we want to we find g prime of 3, where g is the inverse of f, was equal to 1 over f prime of g of x. Okay? 1 over f prime of g of x. So our goal here, of course, is to find g prime of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 3 and plug it in for x. So I'm going to find g prime of 3. That's 1 over f prime of g of 3. So my, my goal here is, of course, to work this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what does g of 3 equal. Now, that's going to be difficult because we don't actually have the function g of x. Okay? We know that g is the inverse of f, but we don't have the actual function. So what we're going to use is one of the properties of inverse functions that we talked about, that um, if you have a certain point on one inverse function, the opposite point will come up on the other one. So, for example, we know that, you know, on the graph of g, we have this, 3 is referring to an x-coordinate, okay? And g of 3, what we're trying to find is the y-coordinate at x equals 3 on this graph of g. So on the graph of g, there's this, there's this point, 3, comma, and then I'll just call it a question mark, because we don't know what the y value is. That's what we're looking to find. You know, g of 3, we're saying, is, is question mark, okay? So that means that if that's the case, if that point is on the graph of uh, g, we know that on the graph of f is the point, the opposite point, we'll call it question mark, comma, 3, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use this right here to help us find what that question mark is. Basically, we're saying that for some x coordinate, so if you plug some value in for x into f of x, it's going to equal 3. So we have to figure out what value of x makes this function f equal to 3. So what we're going to do is set this equal to 3. 1 fourth x cubed plus x minus 1 is equal to 3. Okay? Now, this happens to be a whole number, and you might be able to guess it, but, um, you know, in general, you can use your calculator to um, solve these equations for you. So what you could do is you could plug this left-hand side into y1, plug the right-hand side into y2, use your second calc intersect feature, which I, you know, detail in another video, and um, you'll end up finding that the, the value here is, is actually 2. Okay, so x equals 2. And you can tell just by plugging it in. I mean... 2 to the third is 8, 8 over 4 is 2, plus 2 is 4, minus 1 is going to be 3. So it works out when you plug it in <clears throat> that this is 2. So what we have found out is that on the graph of f, if you plug 2 in, it ends up equaling 3. So this question mark here is equal to 2, okay? So that, therefore, this question mark also is equal to 2. So what we've just discovered is that g of 3 is equal to 2. So without even knowing the function for g of x, we found out that g of 3 is 2. So now we have 1 over f prime of 2. Okay? So that's the last thing we really have to figure out. Now we know the function of f, so you can either use your calculator to find f prime of 2, or you could just take the derivative by hand, which is pretty easy in this case. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. So I will get... Uh, f prime of x is equal to, just take the derivative here, it's going to be 3 fourths x squared plus 1. Okay, when I take the derivative. Now I'll just go ahead and plug 2 into that. So f prime of 2 is equal to 3 fourths times, when I plug 2 in, it's 2 squared plus 1. So 2 squared is 4, it'll cancel the 4 out, and then I'll end up just equaling 4. 
Okay? Now the most common mistake that I see is people just putting therefore the answer is 4 and circling it. But look, it's actually 1 over f prime of 2. So the answer is actually 1 over 4. Okay? That is the answer right there. So what we've come up with is that the, um, the derivative of the inverse of f at 3 is equal to 1 fourth. Kind of a strange thing, but you know, that's, uh, that's what we found out.